I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here uh, in uh, Bellflower, California, here with uh, Ray Comfort, and uh, talking about this new movie that's coming out called The Seven Reasons, and uh, Ray, thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. And uh, so, um, what led up to, to to development of seven reasons uh, I know that I've, I've watched the 180 which is about uh, saving human life yes and uh, there are a lot, there's a lot has happened since the 180 movie so the main reason for uh, having seven reasons now this to be out well it, it came after 180 180 was a very a high bar we were nervous to do any pro-life movie after 180 it's had millions of views were shown in 190 countries we gave away uh, and distributed over a million DVDs it was award-winning, and I thought we can never reach that again because the interviews were so unique. I mean, to, for me to be heckled by a couple of Nazis and then go for a walk straight after that and, uh, and meet a guy who said if he ever um, could get hold of Hitler, he would tear him in pieces because mm. his family had been destroyed by the Nazis. And it all led into the abortion issue and the Holocaust we're going through. And so uh, when this recent legislation was signed in New York, I was horrified. I thought this is no different than Nazi Germany. They are killing babies. It's no longer a fetus in the womb, a non-life, but this is a living human being, a viable human being that dies because someone wants to be selfish, wants to live with themselves, no fear of God, no, no value of human life. And I think it's partly the product of this generation that's been duped into believing they're nothing but animals. You go to the local mm -hmm. university. So we're products of evolution. We're not made by God and his image with a sense of right and wrong. We are mm -hmm. primates. And therefore, there's no right and wrong. And this is the end of that philosophy uh, with no moral values. And so it's a, a, a evolution. Darwinian evolution has a huge cost to it. The benefit is if there's no moral government, then you can fornicate. You can lie and steal. You can lust and watch pornography and homosexuality and adultery with no fear of any repercussions. But there are mm -hmm. repercussions in society because we see society killing its own offspring. And there's no greater evil than to kill your own offspring. You know, no, no animal in nature does that. No female mm -hmm. kills its offspring in nature except human beings, which shows how depraved we are. Well, this is much worse than the times of Hitler. You can think about, uh, I'm not aware that Hitler had a widespread abortion, uh, killing of children like yeah. this, and, and it's much worse now. And uh, in light of what has been happening in, in New York and uh, many other states, they want to celebrate the killing of children. Yes. Seven reasons is the seven major reasons that people choose abortion. Mm -hmm. And so I went to a local college and other places and I asked people, do you believe in abortion? Do you think it's a woman's right? And they said, yes, I, I wouldn't have one myself, but I think it's the right thing to do if you don't want the child. I said, well, give me a reason. And the wonderful thing with uh, seven reasons is that you see people who are adamantly pro-abortion change their minds because they're asked one question. And I did that in 180 and saw people change their minds in a matter of seconds. Same thing happens, mm -hmm. but this takes it one step further because I explain to the people exactly what happened. And uh, it, it is, it's enthralling, it's encouraging uh, to see that God has given us such a wonderful weapon in the conscience. When you address the conscience, you've got an ally right in the heart of the enemy. It's a judge on the courtroom of the mind that agrees with what you're saying. When you speak to the intellect, the carnal mind, you're gonna to get to contention. But when you do what Jesus did and speak to that conscience, mm -hmm. it comes alive and it does its God-given duty to be an impartial judge on the courtroom of the mind telling right from wrong. And conscience can be seared, you can quieten it, you can take the batteries out of the smoke detector to your detriment if there's a fire. It's a silly thing to do. But when you do what Jesus did and go through those 10 commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not commit adultery, that conscience comes alive and it can be so powerful, it drives men to drink, drives some to suicide, and it drives multitudes to the cross because that's his God-given purpose to bring the knowledge of sin. Well, you made an interesting connect, uh, connection between evolution and uh, the, the, the view on human life and, and, and the time of Darwin and his influence. So, uh, specifically, uh, I know that you've done something in the past with, uh, about the evolution issues and on college campus interviewing different professors, but uh, how specifically do you see the, the tie of evolution to the taking of innocent life? Well, that was a catalyst for Hitler. He put Darwinian evolution into practice. What you see, 
in the Holocaust is survival of the fittest, mm -hmm. the Aryan race. Hitler had his own Bibles. Do you know that? He printed 100,000. He had his own commandments. He had 12 commandments. He had his own Jesus, who was an mm -hmm. Aryan, not a Jew. And he said, we need to be like the Jesus that I've created. And if you're not, you're out of here because you're not fit to survive. And we see exactly the same thing happening. What they did in Nazi Germany is they um, called the Jew non-human. And that was their justification for killing non-humans. They're nothing but beasts, and they painted them as that. And exactly the same applies with abortion. They say it's not human. Look, it's heartbeats at three, uh, three weeks, one day. The heart begins to beat. And you, it's got fingers and toes and eyes. And, and so uh, when you confront someone who's on the fence uh, when it comes to abortion, you can push them on the right side of the fence by addressing the conscience and then showing them a picture of a nine-week-old fetus and it's a, a fully formed baby in the womb and a picture's worth a thousand words and that's what we do in Seven Reasons and, um, and people can go to sevenreasonsmovie.com to get details of this film. Okay, I know that you're with Living Waters. You've got a great website, livingwaters.com. Yes. And I want to highlight uh, also that you do uh, um, outreach and evangelism. You, you worked a lot with Kirk Cameron. No, no, he worked with me. He worked with you? Yeah, okay. it's like a joke. Yes, I get it. <laughs> so, uh, no, uh, it is the way of the master. Yes, yeah, Kirk and I... Uh, uh, we've hosted for many years together and we're still good friends which often doesn't happen with things like that people end up disagreeing and clashing but Kirk got a brand new program and he invited me to be his first guest on his brand new TV program and we had him over here uh, for the first four programs of our new Way of the Master season 5 series so mm -hmm. we've got a great relationship and he uh, kindly commended Seven Reasons and his name on it gives it uh, instant credibility with many Okay, once again, uh, for the uh, listeners who watch us, sevenreasonsmovie.com. And also, if I might mention, we have a YouTube channel that's kind of active. It's had, over, uh, it's had 70 million views, and we put up two new videos every single day. And uh, we're very encouraged that it's reaching so many, and it's free. We don't have any advertising, and it's free to subscribe. So, uh, YouTube channel, Living Waters, and the movie details is sevenreasonsmovie.com. Oh, great. You know, it's a blessed uh, time to here be with uh, Mr. R uh, Ray Comfort here with Living Waters and the new movie Seven Reasons. And so uh, it, it is uh, a great honor to meet with you again, and uh, may you have a great response, more, more children to be saved. Yes, sir. So it's our prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's her body. It's our severe disabilities. It's not going to get love. Sip and can't afford it. Rape, incest, th things like that. I just don't feel like I'd be ready. And it's not a living thing. Because also I am a woman who has had an abortion before, and it's not weighing on my conscience. Did you feel guilty when you killed your child? No. Virginia's governor today responded to critics after a move by Democrats to ease restrictions on late-term abortions. That abortion could be considered even during birth. Are you beginning to change your mind about this issue of abortion? I guess you can say yes because, you know, you had good reasons. 